How do we have a system of arms control that based on objective criteria and not subjective criteria? If you are my friend, then it's all right to have enrichment or reprocessing. If I don't like you, then you cannot touch nuclear technology. I mean, I, you know, there's a lot of issues, of course, human rights issues, uh, governance issues, democracies issues. These are issues, and as I said, we have one third of our world to continue to live under authoritarian dictatorship. But it doesn't mean that if we do that, that we continue to you know, apply you know, or nurture a culture of fear that will end up, that we will, self, will destroy each other. You know, these countries are, I think, in my view, you know, the key and on the Iranian issue and on many other issues is a proposal I talked about a few years back, that you need to control access to the fissile material. I still believe that the only long-term solution is to multinationalize all the reprocessing and enrichment facilities. But unless you, you move on, on doing something objective, you know, uh, it will not work. I mean, if people, North Korea or Iran or, or country X or Y, See, the big boys are still relying on nuclear weapons. When you hear that you are modernizing your weapons, when I hear President Putin say, at the end of the day, you know, we are a nuclear weapon state, you know, how do you expect countries who perceive rightly or wrongly that they are insecure, that they might be attacked, to behave? You know? So it's, we need to focus on building trust, you know, and building trust at all levels. You know, it, it's in, on the issues of human rights, on the issues of democracy. Uh, I, I think the agreement, and I've said that publicly before, the agreement you might have with Iran, and I hope you do have one, because an agreement with Iran right now will be a key to stability in the Middle East in many ways. You know. uh, that agreement could have, could have been concluded 10 years ago. I, Iran at that time was ready, and again, I, I might have to mention that. Iran at that time was ready to cap its enrichment to an R&D level. We were talking at that at one point about 360 centrifuge. Iran right now have 20,000 centrifuge. They have all the, all the knowledge and some, you know, and this is to me, again, I'm not apportioning blame, but this is to me a mismanagement of policies, you know, and again, if, if you do not have an agreement today, you should ask yourself, what would be the outcome? The outcome will be much worse, in my view, much worse Middle East, imploding Middle East, you know, uh, more violence, more war. So it is, it is not black and white. You need just to need to see what's prioritized and you need, in, in my experience at least, reaching out to people is much more effective than trying to say, we are going to apply sanction against you. Sanction, in my view, never worked. Unfortunately, when you have something like ISIL, you have to rely on force, you know. But force alone clearly is not the solution. I mean, force is a short-term solution. The long-term solution, the sustainable solution, is a political solution. By asking yourself, why do we have ISIL? How did ISIL came about? Uh, is ISIL the result of disbanding the Iraqi army? and getting rid of all the disgruntled Sunnis, member of the Iraqi army. Who got religion into politics? Did that start in Afghanistan? And who is behind that? I mean, and again, I'm not trying to apportion blame, but we need to, to ask ourselves hard questions, you know, and saying, yes, we need to maybe use force because ISIL is, is a horror, you know, but in order to avoid that we do not have another ISIL tour in three and four, we need to create a different environment so these people will not be, will not be there again. I mean, I, there is a lot, again, you're coming from the Middle East. It's, I need to work on the drivers of peace. People there need to feel that they have their dignity, which is absolutely lacking, like, 
right there. People talk about democracy. People talk, I mean, to me, it's one word. It's human dignity. You wake in the morning, you wake up in the morning, and you feel that you are being treated as a human being. If you do that, I don't think we'll have ISIL. I don't think we'll have the, you know, uh, Al Qaeda. And, and we have to have a policies. I mean, right now, we don't have a policy. In, in Syria, do we have a policy? I don't think we do have a policy. I mean, bombing ISIL is not going to work, you know. Uh, and in many cases, again, I should, you know, we should not be too idealistic. Sometimes you have to choose between the bad and the worse, you know. I mean, we have been talking about Bashar al-Assad as a horrible dictator. He is a horrible dictator. But you need to compare some time between Bashar al-Assad and ISIL, you know. Uh, it, it, is not, it is not always, you know, a, a, a black and white situation. But you have to have a clear vision. Where do you want to go? You have to understand that we're dealing with a very, very complex issues. And you have to understand that at the end of the day, it's political solutions and not military solution. We have seen how the military you know, solution in Afghanistan. We have seen the military solution in, military solution does not feed the hungry, you know, does not cure disease, you know, and you need it sometime, but as, you need to use force when it is the last resource available and the best available. And I think we are too quick in many cases in using force thinking this is a solution. And usually it, it creates, it opens new wounds. It doesn't, it doesn't heal the old one. 